Hey guys, my name is Teresa and I'm a registered dietitian who helps women find their healthiest food balance so that they can feel their best and gain a beautiful relationship with food and their body. And the reason why I am so passionate about getting women to that point is because I have been there. I have been there. I struggled with food. I struggled with finding that confidence in my body. I've done the restriction. I've done the binging. I've done the calorie tracking. I've done the macro counting. I've done the fad diets. I've done honestly everything that you can probably think of. I've done it. And am I doing any of that now to reach my healthiest, happiest weight? No, I'm not doing any of that right now. Long story short, all of those fad dieting, all of those tools didn't help me, they just did not work for me. And they honestly don't work for a lot of women. So today I'm going to be sharing my story on how I shifted from the diet mindset that was holding me back and how I discovered mindfulness and balanced eating, which has really helped me get to a point of a beautiful food balance that both satisfies and nourishes me and has helped me maintain my happy weight. So let's get into it. So in the beginning of time, my parents immigrated from the Philippines to America and they had me and my sister. And for a little background, Filipino culture is pretty known to be blunt and very like matter of fact and respect to our elders is very important and elders can really do no wrong. So when I was growing up, I wasn't the tiniest little girl and my Filipino family would comment on my body. They actually developed a nickname that translates from Filipino to English as the word chubby and that's literally how they kind of referred to me as as if it was my name. And I really know from the bottom of my heart, I know, I know they didn't do it maliciously, but it still subconsciously affected me. And the first time I used food to adhere to a certain size was as early as like fifth grade. As young as being like 10 years old, I already had like body goals. I wanted to have a flat stomach. I remember there was a time I was doing gymnastics and I went to the bathroom and I was sitting on the toilet and I was hunched over and I would just be digging into my stomach, squeezing my belly fat and I would just wish that it would go away. So I started skipping meals. I started skipping my lunches. And another little background, my dad always made me like beautiful lunches. I was actually known in school for having like bomb triple decker sandwiches that my dad made and i would never eat them i would just give them away i would sometimes even just throw them away but whatever the case i didn't eat them all i did was drink water and just watch the kids around me eat and i thought the water would be enough to just fill up my stomach and i wouldn't feel hungry and by doing that i wanted to lose weight and that i did the weight did come off and then I started losing that baby fat and getting a flat stomach. And as I went through high school and I got older, you know, the same mentality was there. I just need to eat as little as possible and I need to just exercise as much as I can so that I can be in my most smallest body and that is the healthiest for me. And at that time, you know, I'm only 4'11", so for some reason, like 100 pounds was like the goal target that I wanted to be at least on or under. Like if I went over hundred pounds, like, oh my God, like that was horrible. And like, what am I doing? Like, I'm so big, like, oh my gosh. The habits of restricting and over-exercising carry it on. And during that time I was really eating low carb. I was researching the heck out of it, YouTubing like all night. Like that was my end, that was my night routine. Like I would just like watch YouTube videos of any thin person I could find, follow, see what they eat and follow it to the T and eat the way they did, move the way they did so that I can look the way they did. I was cooking my own meals regardless of what my parents were making. And I'm so blessed to say that like my parents really did help like cook for us as they were working jobs, I know that's a lot. And yeah, I wouldn't eat their food. I thought rice was going to diminish any progress or effort that I had towards getting healthy and losing weight. So I would just eat my little chicken and my veggies. That's it. Breakfast, it was like a smoothie. 
lunch it would just be bites here and there just not a lot of food i feel like naturally i am a more active person like i like to move my body so i was always in a lot of sports so i did gymnastics taekwondo volleyball softball all of that and i did like it like i like the team effort i liked moving my body i was not only just going to practice but i would be coming home and doing another workout like i was doing pilates for at least 40 minutes because all i wanted at that time was to get abs as time went on the restriction got harder and honestly i was kind of stagnating with my weight i also was in a relationship at that time so i was going on more food dates i was going to you know his house for family dinners i saw these moments to binge i was obsessed with the idea of maintaining such a small physique while also showing people that i can eat like four grown men in my small little body and i was getting praised for that i would get those comments of like oh my gosh like you're so small like i wish i could eat like you and stay in your small body and that like those comments fed me that fed those behaviors that were just so toxic for me of course it just continued on in the restrict slash binge cycle and it's just so crazy to think about it now because it's like i thought i was doing everything right like i thought this was healthy i thought this was just what you were supposed to do to be healthy yet i was constantly thinking about food super low on energy super irritable i was so mean when i got home like towards the end of the day when i used up just all my energy because i wasn't eating anything i would just like crash on my bed and stay there for hours on end it wasn't a time during junior senior year of high school you're kind of starting to think like okay like what do i want to do with my life like what do i want to do what's my career move and i knew i wanted to do something in nutrition like it interested me i was like wow like i'm doing this so well like if i could just teach other people how to do this and what works for them and like how to make them lose weight and tell them to eat this and not that like everything would be great so i applied to the university of florida got in and i went through their undergraduate dietetics program which was like an incredible experience but this is where my relationship with food really started to unfold and crumble so in college you know you have that independence you have the stress of school you're hanging out with friends more staying up later so the control i had with my food and my habits definitely like eased up a bit more just because my priority shifted like you know i wanted to be with my friends like i wanted to have that college experience i wanted to do well in school but again, the only health behavior that I had was eating super clean at home. And then whenever I went out or socialized, I would just go all out. Eating clean to me was experimenting with all of the different diets, like all of them. <laughs> I tried being vegan for a bit, vegetarian, keto, paleo. <laughs> and then when I would go out to a McDonald's run or you know, all you can eat pizza with your friends, I would just go ham because I didn't know a balance. I It was just extremes for me. And it got so extreme that one day my roommate had to actually take me to the campus ER because I was in so much stomach pain from the binging that I couldn't move. It was so crippling. And so I was just sitting there in the emergency room and this is when I kind of had the realization of like maybe my food habits aren't the best before i was even seen i actually just let out a fart and i felt better and so we just went home and it's something that we giggle about now um, and we always kind of giggled about it too but you know it made me question like why is this happening like this isn't normal for me to go to the er like what the heck is going on i knew the binging behaviors weren't really serving me so i kind of like stopped that i was like there's kind of no point in me going all out anymore so i'm just gonna do me and just eat how i eat and over time things kind of just fell into place like i felt relatively good i was eating pretty diverse foods exercising pretty consistently and i honestly really enjoyed like my senior year of college and i wanted to continue learning more so i ended up going to the master's program and did my internship at still the university of florida which is still an amazing amazing program i think just as you learn more about nutrition you get exposure to different populations with underlying conditions and diseases you get more acclimated to the research kind of get the sense that context is very important when it comes to nutrition 
And so I learned for myself that what was best for someone else may not be the best for me. So at this point, I really just did me. I felt really good at this time. I started weightlifting more, just eating as you know intuitively as I could. And I actually was eating more because I was weightlifting and I just felt really good. I felt strong, I felt capable. Food didn't really affect my mental health in any way, really. We ended college on a pretty good note, but then, you know, I graduated, got my master, took the RD exam, became a dietitian, woohoo, all is great. And then I started my first job. And I worked as an inpatient clinical dietitian at a hospital. And the patients that I was seeing were primarily older individuals whose age was at least over 65. A majority of them were like around 70 years old. Um, whenever I would get like a 50 year old patient, I'd be like, oh my God, you're so young. Working at this place was like a blessing and a curse. And it was another pivotal time in my relationship with food. It was a blessing because I learned so much. It was COVID. Honestly, there was a lot of turnover and we were pretty understaffed. So I had to cover a good range of floors. So I was able to see surgery units, ICU, wounds, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, renal disease, even TPN, which was all great experiences. And it really helped me get exposed to a whole bunch of clinical settings. But as like a new RD and me being such like a perfectionist, people pleaser person, I like wanted to do the most. I wanted to do everything. Like I wanted to save everyone. I wanted to be like that RD. And with that, I got super, super burnt out, as you can tell. And also that was a really particularly hard time. My boyfriend was gonna go through two major jaw surgeries. And so there was just like a lot going on. And I was just carrying the stress from everything, even like work and personal life with me all the time. And it really manifested into my eating habits and my relationships with my friends, my family, and even myself. I turned to food and indulgences to just feel something. I use food to relax, I use food to reward myself, I use food to numb, all, everything. I use food to mindlessly eat and to forget. And during this time, I ended up gaining about like 10 pounds. And I didn't think much of it because I also was being pretty consistent and working out still. Like I was lifting even more weight. I was like, okay, awesome. Like I'm getting stronger. I'm still eating my veggies. It's all good. But one day someone who I really, really love sat me down and expressed their concerns over the weight that I've gained. And honestly, I was like so shook by that conversation because half of me was like, I mean, yeah, my clothes are getting tighter. You no, know, I feel a bit puffier. Yes, I'm stressed, but like, that's just how it is. And weight is weight and it'll fluctuate and then it's fine. Like, why are you even telling me this right now? And then the other part of me was like, wait, has my body really changed? Like, I have been eating more. Like, am I okay? Like, is this kind of concerning? Like, what is going on? So like that period was very disorienting to me. It was definitely a mental battle more than anything. And that was like the first time in a very long time that someone kind of spoke negatively about my body to, to me. And this is where I truly understand when people don't feel confident or comfortable in their body because I also didn't. And for me, it was due to both like external circumstances and internal turmoil that I had to deal with. So again, this process like really wasn't easy. And so I kind of sought out some help and I started reading this book and it just really helped get my mind on track. And instead of going through a, sm a spiral, it really channeled my thoughts and energy into more healing and recovery as opposed to more restriction and binging and my past. And honestly, everything kind of just fell into place after that. I started putting up boundaries for myself to protect myself. I engaged in more non-food coping mechanisms for whenever I felt stressed or overwhelmed. And honestly, looking back, that whole process was very beautiful. Even though in the moment I was like, ah, it was much needed and it helped me really discover myself way more than I thought I ever would. And I'm grateful those experiences happened. So where am I at right now? Well, I'd be lying if I said that I never had a bad body image day, like we're human and I'm a 25 year old woman, like those days come, but they are nowhere, nowhere near as down 
and as isolating as it once was. And now I truly see that life is so beautiful and life is way more than just what size you are or what weight you are on the scale. My idea of healthy for me is really just making sure I feel good. I personally don't perform or interact well if I don't feel good and confident in my skin and I really don't think that's a life to live. You're kind of robbing yourself from those beautiful moments if you are just tied down to negative body image thoughts or the stress about food. And now I know what foods feel good to me and what portions feel good to me if I overeat a little bit okay but i can now look at it in a very neutral lens of like okay what happened why did this happen like how are you feeling what can we do next time i have absolutely no restrictions because i'm blessed enough to not have any food intolerances or sensitivities to be honest and restricting that food only made me feel even more out of control with food I now move in ways that feel good to me. If I want to feel strong, if I want to feel empowered, if I want to feel flexible, I do it. The key for me was to separate my whole identity and values as a person from that of a weight and aesthetics view to my soul, my mannerisms, my personality, my actions, my thoughts. Like, that is me, not just my outward appearance and the size of my body. And it's funny because when your habits are aligned with your lifestyle, they're realistic, they're sustainable, they work for you, that's when your weight just kind of finds itself and it's a beautiful kind of set point for you. And that's where I would say I'm at right now. You know, some days I'm hungrier than others, so I eat more. Some days I'm not as hungry, so I don't eat as much. Some days I move more, some days I don't move as much, some days I relax. So that is my story. I hope if you made it this far, you get a new perspective on health and what health means to you. I hope you feel less alone. Thank you so much for being here. If this just helps one person, I did it, I have done did it, I'm good. Like that's all I had to do. So if you want to keep up with me, you can find me on Instagram at the rest of veggie and on TikTok at the rest of veggie. And always remember my DMs are always open. So if you need support, if you have any questions, just reach out to me and I will get back to you. Bye.